Thank you for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. We will now like to begin the International Symposium hosted by the Government of Japan for the North Korean Human Rights Abuses Awareness Week fiscal year 2021. I am counselor of the headquarters for the abduction issue at the Cabinet Secretariat. I am Okamoto Tsukasa, and I'm happy to be serving as the MC. Those of you who are here, those of you who are viewing the streaming, thank you very much for having interest in the abduction issue. Uh, despite uh, the busy year and season and the COVID-19 pandemic. In order to prevent the spread of infection for this year's symposium, we've limited the number of in-person participants, but we're also offering live streaming. It can be enjoyed in Japanese from the official channel of the headquarters for the abduction issue at YouTube and the English special channel. Those of you who want to access the special channel in English, uh, please come to the special site for this symposium, which can be accessed from the English website of our headquarters. Today, we have the families of the victims. Please stand up, if you don't mind, or you can remain seated. Thank you very much. We also have the families of specified missing persons, possibly related to North Korea. Thank you very much. And we have several parliamentarians who have been kind enough to come here despite their busy schedules. Let me introduce them to you. Mr. Akaike Masaaki, State Minister, Cabinet Office. Thank you. Mr. Izumi Kenta, Chair, Constitutional Democratic Party of Japan and Member of the House of Representatives, thank you. Ms. Mori Yuko, Head of the CDP Party Headquarters for North Korean Abduction and Board Member of the House of Councillors Special Committee. Board Member of the uh, Mr. Sakurada Yoshitaka, uh, member of the House of Representatives Special Committee. Thank you very much. Ms. Sugita Mio, board member, House of Representatives Special Committee. Thank you very much. Member of the House of Representatives Special Committee, Mr. Tsukada Ichiro. Thank you. Member of the Special Committee at the House of Councillors, Mr. Takeuchi Shinji. Thank you very much. Head of the Headquarters for North Korean Abductions at the Democratic for the People, Mr. Kawaii Takanori, Member of the House of Councillors. We also have staff members from the office of Mr. Uh, Shimojo Mitsu, but before that, we have with us Mr. Matsubara Jin. And from the office of the member of the special committee at the House of Representatives, Shimojo Mitsu, and board member of the House of Councillors Special Committee, Mr. Shimizu Masato, staff members are representing those offices. We also have received a message from Ms. Nishimura Chinami member of the House of Representatives Special Committee and Secretary General of the CDP. Thank you. In part one, the commendation ceremony for the SA competition will take place, and in part two, the International Symposium will take place. We will start part one, the commendation ceremony for the SA competition on the abduction issue. In order to resolve the abduction issue, it is critical that the Japanese people unite in solidarity and demonstrate our firm determination to realize the earliest possible return of all the abductees. The government is working hard on raising the awareness on the issue. In particular, raising the awareness of the younger generation who had little opportunity to get to know the issue is crucial. From 2017, we have held the essay competition on the abduction issue for the junior and high school students. This year, we have introduced group prizes for schools participating proactively, and the second best prize for the English essay section was introduced. 
for all the sections of the junior high, senior high, and the English, 2,854 essays were submitted. As a result of vigorous screening for the junior and the senior high, one top price, two second best prices, and three special prize essays were chosen. For the English section, one top prize, and two second best were selected. The group prize goes to Kobe City, Tamatsu Junior High School of Hyogo Prefecture, Tachikawa City, Tachikawa Number no. 7 Junior High School, Sakai City Tsukuno Junior High School of Osaka, Hyogo Prefecture Himeji Minami Senior High School, Fukushima Prefecture Aizu High School for Agriculture and Forestry, Beppu Mizobe Gakuen Senior High School of Oita, Gunma Kokusai Academy Secondary School of Gunma were chosen. The group prize certificates will be sent to the schools by postal service. Next is the commentation of the winners of the top and the second prize. Will the students please come on the stage? Minister Matsuno for the abduction issue, please come onto the stage. Firstly, the junior high school section. The top price for the junior high school, Asakai City Tsukuno Junior High School of Osaka, Prefecture, first grade, Mr. Shintani Go. Certificate. Top prize for junior high school. First grade, Mr. Shintani Go. Sakai City Tsukuno Junior High School of Osaka. At the 2021 essay competition related to the North Korean Human Rights Abuses Awareness Week organized by the government headquarters of the abduction issue. Your essay has won the top prize as a result of vigorous screening. At December 11, 2021, Minister for Abduction, Matsuno Hirokazu. Next is the second best prize for junior high school, Saga Prefecture Karatsu Higashi Junior High School, third grade, Miss Wakiyama Haruka. The next second best prize for junior high school, Kimotsuki Town Nami no Junior High School of Kagoshima, second grade, Miss Miyagahara Mei. Next is the senior high school section. Top prize for senior high school, Kumamoto Prefecture, Yashiro Technical High School, third grade, Mr. Umeka Tsutomu. The next high school section, Hamana Yamade Gakuin, third grade, Miss Kuano Aoi, 
Miss Kuano is not attending today. Second best prize for senior high school, Hyogo Prefecture Himeji Minami High School. First grade, Miss Miyawaki Hinata. The next introduction of the winners of the English section. Top prize of the English essay section, Sendai Ikue Gakuen High School of Miyagi, 10th grade, Miss Watanabe Michio. Second best prize for junior high school, Makuhari Junior High School, second grade, Miss Maeda Moa. Second best prize for senior high school, Gunma Kokusai Academy, second grade, Miss Hirose Fuka. Please give them a big applause once again. Thank you, Minister Matsuno. Please return to your seat. We will now hear the reading of the essays by the winners of the grand prizes, Shinta Nigo-san, Umekawa Tsutomu-san, and Watanabe Michio-san. Umekawa-san and Watanabe-san visited the site of production of Megumi in Niigata City on November the 27th, so they will share their impression upon their visit after the reading of the essay. First of all, I call upon Shinta Nigo-san, Grand Prix winner of the junior high school student section. Please go ahead. Thinking about the abduction issue. Tsukuno Junior High School, Sakai City, 7th grade, Shinta Nigo. If it were me, fear struck my body. I watched the video about Megumi at school. If I had been taken to a country that I don't know by strangers as Megumi had been, I would have lost the will to live. I might have just thought, I hope it's a dream, or I don't want to believe it. I would have been driven to despair and anxiety, wondering what would happen to me now that I was taken away from my family. However, Megumi did not lose hope. She thought about her family in Japan and looked forward to the future with hope. I was deeply impressed. Everything was taken from me ex except my life. These are the words of Mr. Hasuike Kaoru, an abductee. If it had happened to me, I would have lost myself. I would have found life to be meaningless. I had heard of the word abduction, but had only a vague idea that it meant something terrible. However, my image of abduction 
and the reality were very different. As I began to do some research on the abduction issue, one key word which appeared quite frequently was unimportant. I was shocked to find that there are more than a few people in Japan who have no interest in the issue. In June 2020, Mr. Yokota Shigeru, who, together with his wife Sakie, devoted his life to resolve the issue, passed away. He must have been so frustrated. The only thing that saved him was his meeting with his granddaughter, Ms. Yoon Kim Kim, and her child in 2014. He said such meetings are taken for granted by ordinary people, but was a hard fought occasion for him. Ms. Yokota Saki often says that it is not words that she seeks, rather, it is sincerity and action. Abduction is an issue between the governments of Japan and North Korea. We must make sure that we don't blame or discriminate against North Korean civilians. If we do, it will become a new human rights issue. Solving this issue will require the whole nation to work hard. Is there anything we can do? Through participation in sign collecting campaigns, And coverage of the issue in the media, people's interest may rise. We should exchange opinions on how to solve the problem and not let the issue be forgotten. Rather than fighting, I think Japan should make approaches and have dialogues. Then we will learn the facts and find a solution. This year, the Tokyo Olympic Games. Had been held. The slogan for the Olympics was Inspiration Unites Us All. I believe that if we can deepen exchanges with people around the world and help each other, such an incident will never happen again. I hope that the world will be united and that the abduction issue will be resolved as soon as possible. Thank you very much. The next is the top prize for senior high school, Mr. Umekawa Tsutomu. Time to think about again. Kumamoto Prefecture. Yatsushiro Technical High School, Nike classes, third year, Ugmekawa Tsutomu. I lost my father suddenly last year. He was not in hospital, and of course, he did not have any life threatening illness. However, uh, one day, it really happened suddenly. When an event that I had only seen in dramas or movies, That someone had made up happened to me. I was flustered, hesitated, and I froze. At the same time, my thoughts completely stopped, and I could not think of anything. That is、uh, the vivid memory I still have the grief of losing a loved one, the bottled up resentment and hatred, and the sense of loss that piles up day by day by encountering the situation. I felt as if I had come into contact with the emotions of the families of North Korean abductees, which I had previously only thought of as someone else's problem. The first person who comes to mind when I hear the word North Korean abductee is Megumi Yokota. Yokota Megumi. She was abducted on November 15, 1977. And despite numerous requests and meetings with North Korea, Since then, she has yet to be returned. Most of the news stories so far have ended with the victim's family's heartbreaking cries and determination not to give up. It was the same scene that I had seen many times since I was in elementary school. 
Many more months have passed since then, and I am writing this essay. The question that occupies most of my mind is why is this problem still not solved? For example, I had many opportunities to think about the abduction issue in my school classes. This is probably true for everyone, regardless of the generation. However, whether information we are given is always the same materials and reproduced images, and the people who receive the information must feel half discouraged and half resigned by the fact that there is no progress. It is important not to forget this fact, but is it really enough just not to forget? Voting for politicians who are committed to re resolving the abduction issue, participating in petition, and other such activities are somewhat someone else's business, although I feel it's a tough job. I look out of my corner of my eye at the people who are standing on the streets to collect signatures and pass by them cold-heartedly. There is a cold, calculating part of myself that says there is no way an aunt can defeat an uncontrollable elephant. I wonder if the sensibility of the Japanese people who have lost interest in others over time has led to the lack of interest in the abduction problems today. In fact, the news of the death of Megumi's father, Yokota Shigeru, was completely overwhelmed by the COVID-19 news. From now on, as the international situation changes, there may be progress toward solving the problem. In the end, unless the awareness of the people ourselves, including myself, changes, fundamental problems will not be solved. I think this is the time to think again. Only from there can anything begin. And next, this is my observation after my visit to the site of abduction. On November the 27th this year, I visited the site in Niigata where Miss Yokota Megumi was abducted. From the Niigata City Yori Junior High School where she studied, to the road crossings where she was last witnessed, the place of the family's house, and the coastline with fierce waves of the Japan Sea roaring. As I stepped onto the places where I had only seen in pictures or films, one step each filled my heart with fear. When I stood before the shrine for the war dead. I could almost see Megumi's mother, Sakie, calling, Megumi, Megumi, searching desperately. It was as if the agonizing voices of the families of the abductees were ringing in my ears. Oh no, 44 years ago, in this peaceful residential area, an inhumane, gruesome abduction has occurred. This is not an incident of the past. It has not been resolved and continues to this day. This must not drift away from our memory. We must not look the other way. These are what I felt painfully once again. Please do get to know about the abduction issue. Please do stand side by side with the pain, sorrow, and despair of their families until the abductees regain freedom and respect as a human being and the anguish of the families are put to an end. Until then, we must continue to talk about these issues, send out our messages to the world, and these very acts, I believe, will be the first step towards the resolution of the issue. Thank you very much. Next top prize English section, Miss Watanabe Michio. High school, tenth grade. 
It is up to us to create a crew to solve the abduction issue. Next, I'd like to share my impression of the abduction site inspection. How did Megumi feel on her way home that day? Yori Junior High School to her home was only 600 meters away. And it was a quiet residential area that seemed to be everywhere. However, the sign placed in the vicinity asking for information made me realize that the 30 year old girl has not returned her happy home awaited by her whole families and has been deprived of her everyday life. Through the rain, the strong wind from the baby in Japan resonated with me like a cry for help, making me again think that we should seriously face the abduction issue. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you very much. Despite the difficulties due to the COVID pandemic and delays in classes and lessons, the competition was possible by the massive support of the Board of Education and the school teachers across the uh, country. We express our deepest gratitude to you all. The nine essays that won the top and the second best pr prizes are displayed in the foyer today and will be carried later on national newspapers and the website of the headquarters for the abduction issue of the Cabinet Secretariat. This is the end of the commendation ceremony for the essay competition of North Korean Human Rights Abusers Awareness Week. Congratulations to all the winners. Before you leave, we will take a group photo. Please stay where you are. Please take the pictures. Yoroshii Done? Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Please return to your seat. We will now begin part two, the International Symposium on International Cooperation to Resolve the Abduction Issue as a Global Issue. On behalf of the organizers, first of all, I would like to call upon Minister Matsuno Hirokazu, Chief Cabinet Secretary and Minister in Charge of the Abduction Issue for opening remarks. Minister Matsuno. Thank you for the introduction. I am Matsuno Hirokazu, Chief Cabinet Secretary and Minister in Charge of Abduction Issue. Thank you for joining us in person and digitally on the occasion of the International Symposium hosted by the Government of Japan as an event related to North Korean Human Rights Abuses Awareness Week. This symposium is attended by victims' families and experts on the Korean Peninsula issue from Japan and overseas. I reiterate my gratitude to those who are participating through diverse formats, including video messages and live appearances by remote connections. After five abductees returned in 2002, there has not been a single victim repatriating. I am deeply frustrated for being helpless when I think about the feelings of the victims who are waiting eagerly to return 
and the families who are longing to be reunited. After the inauguration of the new cabinet, Prime Minister Kishida and I met with the families and listened to their desperate calls. The abductees, as well as the families, have aged. They wish to see concrete results at any cost. There is no time to lose. Again, I was reminded of the urgency of the issue. Abduction is a critical issue concerning the sovereignty of Japan and the lives and safety of Japanese citizens. Prime Minister Kishida, in his policy speech, demonstrated his resolve to realize the return of all abductees at the earliest possible timing. It is an issue given highest priority in the Kishida cabinet. Japan will continue our all-of-government effort to fulfill that goal. North Korea is blessed with diligent labor force and bountiful resources. As the minister in charge, I am determined to resolve the abduction issue and draw a bright future both for Japan and North Korea. In order to dismantle the mistrust currently lying between Japan and the DPRK, the only way forward is for Japan to actively take the initiative and build trust at the highest level between the leaders. Thus, Prime Minister Kishida is of the resolve to meet with Chairman Kim Jong-un face-to-face without any conditions attached. Based on the Japan DPRK Pyongyang Declaration, our goal is to resolve outstanding issues, reach a settlement on the unfortunate past, and aim towards normalization of diplomatic relationship. By capturing every opportunity, we will make all-out efforts. At the same time, it is also important to gain international support and cooperation. Day after his inauguration, Prime Minister Kishida had a telephone meeting with President Biden, asked for his understanding and cooperation on the immediate resolution of the abduction issue, and secured President Biden's support. Whenever he has meetings with leaders around the world, the Prime Minister asks for support towards the early resolution of abduction and confirms with his counterparts to keep close collaboration on this matter. And whenever I have meetings with dignitaries of other countries, as the Minister in charge, I mention abduction and seek their cooperation. Last month, the third committee of the United Nations General Assembly adopted the resolution on the situation of human rights in the DPRK, co-sponsored by Japan. This comes as the 17th adoption over 17 consecutive years. The adoption was done unanimously, and it is a demonstration of the deep concern that the international community has over the abduction issue. We expect it will be adopted at the plenary meeting of the General Assembly later this month. In order to solve the issue, it is important for the people of Japan to be united and express our strong will for the earliest possible repatriation of all the abductees. The government will continue to engage in awareness campaigns through viewing events of the anime Megumi, gatherings and stage performances in various parts of Japan. Of special importance is raising awareness among the young generation who so far had not so many opportunities to learn about abduction. As a former Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology, I feel the importance of such initiative. Specifically, we are offering training to faculty, organizing essay competitions for secondary school students, and engaged in joint projects with universities to have education major students plan classes on abduction in mock classrooms. Prior to today's event, I had the opportunity to have a chat session with the students of Hokkaido Education University, a partner in the mock classroom project, 
and gained valuable feedback. I also have been impressed by the strong messages delivered by the high school and junior high school students who won prizes in the competition, including essays in English. In order to diversify the means of communication, the headquarters for the abduction issue opened an official YouTube channel and Twitter account. Since their launch last year, many citizens have signed up. This symposium is being live streamed through the YouTube channel as well. We will continue to strengthen our efforts in communication. We are also engaged in delivering information to abductees and the people of North Korea through radio broadcasting to North Korea. This symposium is being aired live through radio broadcasting jointly by the Japanese government and the United States Agency for Global Media. If our voices become louder, gaining wider reach through this symposium, that will be a strong push towards resolution of the abduction issue. By asking for your continued support and cooperation, under the leadership of Prime Minister Kishida, whole of government effort will continue. We shall capture every opportunity available to realize the earliest possible return of all abductees. With that pledge, I conclude my opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Matsuno. Next, we will listen to the appeals by the families of the victims from Japan and abroad. Due to COVID-19, the families of overseas victims have sent video messages. First of all, from Japanese family members regarding uh, the Association of Families, the assembly has just been organized, leadership has changed, and Mr. Izuka Shigeo is now succeeded uh, by the Secretary General, Mr. Yokota Takuya, and uh, Mr. Izuka Koichiro. Uh, the Vice Secretary General has become uh, the Vice Head. First of all, uh, the younger brother of the abductee, Miss Yokota Megumi, and uh, the Head of the Association of Families of Victims, Mr. Yokota Takuya. Good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. I am Yokota Takuya from the Association of Families of Victims Kidnapped by North Korea. At the age of 13, 44 years ago, Yokota Megumi was abducted by North Korean agents. I am one of the younger twin brothers. It is a Saturday today, but thank you all for coming in unity and solidarity to rescue all the abducted victims. To the a junior and high school, junior and senior high school students who applied for the essay competition and to the winners, I express my heartfelt gratitude. The Japan North Korea Leader Summit in Pyongyang was held in September 2002, which is 19 years ago. So the reality is that the younger generation do not know this issue as a real ongoing issue. Thanks to this competition, it is an opportunity to think about the inherent nature of the abduction issue and for each and every one to recognize that it is an issue of their own and will be a driver to prevent the issue being forgotten away and will cause us to listen to the voiceless voice of the victims. I thank you very much. As was mentioned by the moderator, Councillor Mr. Okamoto, the Association of Families Extraordinary Assembly was held today. 
and I, Yokota Takuya, have succeeded Mr. Shigeo Izuka as the head of the association. I will brief the media after the symposium, but I was nine years old when my sister was abducted, and 44 years since then that I have to fight as the third head of the group. I feel an indescribable contradiction at this reality. Here I am, unable to accept why the government of Japan cannot resolve this issue. I am full of silent but profound anger. Even with the change of the leader, our demand does not change. That is, we continue to demand only the immediate return of all abductees all at once. Uh, this high hurdle will be kept high. We will relentlessly continue international collaboration and will disseminate our voices for the resolution of the North Korean abduction issue. I really need your continued support. Uh, finally, my message to Chairman Kim Jong-un. If all the abductees are returned, both Japan and North Korea will be able to envision a bright future and realize peace. I look forward to your brave, courageous decision. Thank you. Yo Mr. Yokota, thank you very much. Next, I call upon Mr. Izuka Koichiro, eldest son of abductee Ms. Taguchi Yaiko and Vice Secretary General of the Association of Families of Victims Kidnapped by North Korea, Mr. Izuka. Good afternoon. I'm the eldest son of Taguchi Aiko. I am Izuka Koichiro, and I was appointed Secretary General at the extraordinary session that just occurred. Izuka Shigeo has become ill. He is still hospitalized. So we had a discussion with him, and he said that it will be difficult for him to continue to serve the role of the chair. So the change of senior members. Yokota Shigeru served as the chair for 10 years, and Izuka Shigeo, previous chair, served for 14 years. For so many years, both of them had borne heavy burden. But it's taken too long, and the number of years they served demonstrates the length of time it has taken to come here. In the Japanese government, under the new Kishida administration, they have attached highest priority to this issue, and they are going to take initiative as a highest priority issue since September 2002. Not a single abductee has returned. So results have not been delivered. No one can deny that fact. In the Japanese government, uh, to the Japanese government, I have a proposal. As we have been saying, immediate return of all abductees. This is a goal that must be upheld. And this is a demand that we must continue to tell the North Koreans. Most recently, in the Japan DPRK negotiations, joint investigation, or setup of liaison office, there had been some action for gradual improvement to be called upon to the Japanese side. If no results have been delivered for a long period of time, maybe some mitigation of tension, if a little bit of a piecemeal results can be shown. But that's not what we want. What we want is the repatriation of the abductees. And that's going to be the biggest first condition. Even if joint investigation is going to be done or liaison offices to be set up, if there are proponents of such idea. 
we are against such proposals because the DPRK government is constantly surveilling the abductees. They know whereabouts. So joint investigation and liaison office are mere formalities without any substance. And the Japanese government, in the Japanese government, nuclear missile and abduction. We hope that abduction can be separated from nuclear and missile. December 6th, Prime Minister Kishida made a policy speech based upon the Japan DPRK Pyongyang Declaration. Abduction, nuclear and missile issues will be comprehensively dealt with. That was the comment he made. But we can't wait. We can't wait. We don't have time to wait for all three to be packaged and solved comprehensively. So please carve out abduction and deal it as one big issue. If you can talk with President Biden, please tell him that the Japanese government will carve out abduction and deal with abduction. And please negotiate with the DPRK. We hope that the Japanese and DPRK government can engage in negotiations for repatriation Arimoto Kayoko or Yokota Shigeru-san have passed away during the past couple of years. And as the Association of Families, you may get the image that uh, it's been rejuvenated. This wasn't the ideal that we had pictured. We were hoping that while the family members are fit, that there would be reunification and that we would cry from happiness. We will continue to uphold that goal and devote ourselves. So participants and members of the Japanese government, please be aware that that's our hope. And please cooperate so that this will be solved as immediately as possible. Thank you. Mr. Izuka, thank you very much. Next, I will call upon Ms. Takeshita Tamaji, who is the elder sister of specified missing person Furukawa Noriko-san and the Secretary General of the Family Association of the Missing Persons, probably related to the DPRK. Ms. Takeshita, please. Good afternoon. My young sister, Furukawa Noriko, 48 years ago, on July 7, 1973, when she was 18, disappeared from our family home in Ichihara City, Chiba Prefecture. She graduated from the Prefectural Commercial High School that very spring and gained a job at a large shipbuilding company, a local company. She called me and said, I've been assigned to the accounting department. Works hard, but it's worth it. The seniors are kind. I'm having fun. And those words ended up being the final words that I had ever heard from my younger sister. She wanted to purchase with her own money cotton yukata for the summer festival, so she asked mother to come shopping with her. So she was planning to go shopping with mother, carrying in her purse the bonus paid. Bonus was paid on June, on July 6th, and on the next day, on the 7th, Saturday, she was to meet mother at 3 in Chiba. But right before noon, an acquaintance of her called her mo mother to say she cannot make it, and we don't know her whereabouts since. The bonus was kept in the drawer of her office desk in an envelope. She was going to work. She was having fun. So we thought she didn't leave upon her own will. She probably got involved in some incident. 
She was diligent. She was kind. She was straightforward and active. Mother notified the police and looked for information in newspaper articles or through television programs, but we were able, never able to gain information. And then in 1997, March, Mother, who was watching a TV program featuring the abduction by North Korea of Yokota Megumi-san, thought maybe my daughter was abducted. So she sent to the TV station a letter with one photograph. And the producer of the program met with Mr. Ahn Myung-jin, who had defected to ROK. And when the producer showed him the photos, he pointed to my sister's photo and said, I've seen this woman. When I was hospitalized in Hospital 915, I met her and had a chat with her. The TV program producer gave us that information. Already 24 years had passed after Noriko disappeared from the family. In 2002, then Prime Minister Koizumi visited DPRK and North Korea admitted on abduction. And ever since, many people came out and said that they are looking for their disappeared families like ourselves. A private sector organization began to give the title specified missing persons and began looking for people with a suspicion. But the national government and the police were very indifferent to specified missing persons. In April 2005, we began a lawsuit against the Japanese government to seek the recognition of abduction for my sister. It was a champion litigation representing the families of many missing persons. But two years later, the head of the headquarters for abduction issue of the cabinet office read the declaration in the courtroom and mother and I dropped the case. Rather than seeking the formality of being recognized as abductee, we want substance. We want the rescue of my sister. Yes, there are many people who clearly have been abducted from various evidences, including testimonies of North Korea and photographs. But after two had been de designated in 2007, no new abduction has been recognized by the government of Japan. Hasuike Kaoru, who repatriated in 2002, said in a speech, that there are many Japanese who had been abducted still remaining in North Korea, and they have hope that they will once be rescued. So please rescue them and save them before their hope becomes despair. My mother passed away at the age of 94, 11 years ago. In her late years, she was saying, we know our daughter is in North Korea, but why isn't the government trying to save her. Why can't they? Don't they have the will? She looked very sad. That was as far as she could do in terms of complaining to the government. According to the Japanese government, there are 873 missing persons probably related to North Korea. 88% of them had been abducted between the ages of 10 and 39. And currently, 77 or 50% are above the age of 70. That represents how long they have kept unrescued. My younger sister will turn 67 in a few days. We have no time to lose. Please bring back the abductees while they are still alive and while the families who have waited long enough are still alive. Thank you. Ms. Takeshita, thank you very much.
Well, he was studying in Beijing in August 2004 while he was traveling to Hunan province of China. There is a suspicion that David Snedden was abducted by North Korea. There is a video message from his brother, J James Snedden. Our thoughts on David, a message from the Snedden family. David's paternal second great-grandmother, Janet Morris, a bobbin winder in, Scottish, in a Scottish linen mill, died of tuberculosis at the tender age of 21. She had just one child who lived, David's great-grandfather, Robert. Now among her descendants are teachers, engineers, PhD researchers, lawyers, nurses, medical doctors, university professors, and prominent businessmen. How do they view her life? The answer is with esteem and awe. We wonder who will be the descendants of North Koreans forgotten rural or oppressed families living far from Pyongyang, the center of North Korean tyranny. During this time of winter and brutal cold in the DPRK, we must ask ourselves about the fate of North Koreans' average citizens. Children, young men and women all surely lack adequate food and life necessities for basic survival this time of year. David would seek outside help and share any necessities available with others. South Korea, Japan, and the United States have food and clothing necessities in abundance. Although these countries' formal governmental agencies probably would not participate in aid programs directed to North Korea for political reasons, churches, charitable groups, and individuals could if they, if they had the will to do so. We as concerned family members and citizens should foster such groups. Continuing, we are sure that David has developed the rare character trait of empathy for those who suffer. David's 17 years in North Korea, living alongside and observing her people teaches that attribute well. This trait, coupled with his second great-grandmother Jan Janet Morris's birth gift attribute of long suffering, so interwoven, has enabled David to survive physically and mentally these nearly two decades of separation from family, friends, and countries. When he returns to us, as we sure he will, David will share with each family member those hard personal lessons taught north in the 38th parallel. We, his family, are assured that David's charity for those who suffer alongside him has not failed. With these thoughts in mind, we, David's family, pray that our group of associated families will visualize not only our family members presently living in North Korea against their will, but during this winter season especially, that we will see the forgotten North Korean oppressed and suffering families also. We will not fail in our efforts or hopes of supporting even basic food and necessities for them. Certainly, such, such efforts would benefit our abducted beloved family members also. I would like to add a few words in my poor Japanese. We have met with so many of you over the 15 years, and we've talked about our beloved abductees. We so miss seeing you and feeling your spirits in person. Our modern day plague has caused great havoc, but one day it will be gone and we will embrace your smiles and community and spirit of Gambaru once again. Please. Don't give up the fight for our loved ones. Please don't give up the fight for the oppressed, beleaguered, daily, deeply suffering citizens of North Korea.
like all oppressive regimes previously in time the bold spirit of freedom and human dignity breaks down the walls literally and figuratively and the sun will rise again let's keep the faith and the fight our kindest regards from the Snedden family Thank you very much, Mr. Snedon. Next. In 1978, Anoja Panchoi disappeared in Macau where she was working away from home. It was later made known that she was abducted by North Korea through the book published by Mr. Jenkins, husband of Ms. Sogahitomi. Uh, her nephew, Mr. Panchoi Pancho, has sent us a video message. Hello, my name is Panjong Panjoy. I am the nephew of Anocha Panjoy, abducted by North Korea. I will give you the history of Anocha going missing. It was around 1978 that Anocha was abducted. Back then, Anocha was working in Bangkok and was returning to her family home at a frequency of once every couple of months. One day, she came home, back to the family home. Later on, it ended up as her final visit. But she was having dinner with the family, and she said, I'm going to work in Macau for the next one or two months. But after I return from Macau, I will not leave and I will work in Bangkok. And after she left for Macau, one or two months passed when a friend or friends of Anocha based in Bangkok and their names were Ron and An, the two of them sent a letter to our family home. And Anocha's friend's letter included a message to the father and elder brother of Anocha to visit them in Bangkok. So, father and brother of Anocha went to Bangkok to meet her friends Ron and An. According to the two friends, Anocha went missing in Macau. They don't know her whereabouts. One day, Anocha went to the beach to take photos with the tourists, and she never came back. And they've not been able to communicate with her. Until we access the report that Anocha was abducted by North Korea, we had no clue of her whereabouts. We were left abandoned. We didn't know what to do. 2005, November 1st. So that was 2005 which means that 27 years had passed since Anocha went missing. On the evening of November 1st, my father, who is the brother of Anocha, was watching the ITV evening news. And they were featuring a story about a Thai woman who was abducted by North Korea. And they reported that her name is Anoche. Anocha and Anoche sound similar. So my father thought they are talking about Anocha. This is the photo we took. This is the photo of Anocha. Anoche was abducted by North Korea. That was what the news said. I was shocked and talked with father. What should we do? 
whom should we contact? When Anocha went missing in 1978, we were at a loss. We didn't know how to look for her. We didn't know where the Office of Foreign Affairs was located, what kind of ministry it is. We didn't know who to consult with. And time passed until 2005. Father of Anoja was waiting for her return. But in July, the month Anoja was born, he passed away at the age of 94, waiting for Anoja's return, waiting for his daughter to come back. In November 2005, Anoja's news was featured on television. And from around that timing, we have been receiving assistance from journalists, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the National Association for the Rescue of Japanese Kidnapped by North Korea, and the Association of Families. But there had not been much action during the past year or two. The hope of the families is waning day after day. But we are encouraged to find that in Japan, the stories of our family are still being reported and that our cases are being followed. So Japan has given us a small hope. Between 2005 to 2019, I used to participate in various events every year. I attended the symposium in South Korea. I went to Geneva. Most recently, I visited New York to participate in a meeting at the United Nations. My last attendance in such events was when I visited Japan. I truly wish Anoja to come back. I want to confirm whether she was truly abducted by North Korea and is living in North Korea. Even if Anoja can't come back, evidence that she was there in North Korea would do. If she can't return alive, then her remains wrapped in white cloth would be acceptable. That is my only dream. Thank you very much, Mr. Panchoy. This was the appeals by the families of the victims. Thank you very much for waiting. We will start the panel discussion. The moderator and the panelist will appear on the stage. Mr. Choi Khan will join us live from Seoul, South Korea. Mr. Greg Scarlato pre-recorded his message. In the screen, we have to confirm our connection with Seoul, South Korea. Mr. Choi Khan, can you hear us? Testing, testing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and we will talk with you again. Thank you for checking the connection. The moderator will moderate this program. The moderator is an expert of international politics, security, intelligence, and United Nations diplomacy from August 2017 until July last year. He was the Deputy Permanent Representative of Japan to the United Nations and is currently Professor of School of International Public Policy, Osaka University, Professor Hoshino Toshia. I hand off the microphone to you. Thank you for the introduction. I am Hoshino. We will talk about the resolution of the global issue as a global issue, to resolve the abduction issue as a global issue. Uh, we have experts from the United States and other countries who are in the first line 
Please allow me to introduce uh, the uh, panelist from the hall, Professor of Keio University, uh, Professor Nishino Junya, Professor Nishino, Dr. Nishino, thank you. Thank you very much. He is an expert of international politics about uh, Korea and the peninsula, about uh, East Asia and countries' relationships. At academia and the media, he is highly active. Thank you for joining us. Next, joining us live from Seoul, South Korea, Vice President of the Asan Institute for Policy Studies, Mr. Choi Kan. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Pleasure to be with you. Yeah, Choi Mr. Choi Kan is the expert of uh, inter-Korean relationship about the the peninsula in the security and diplomacy area and the risk management. He is the top expert, multilateral security cooperation Northeast Asia. I had a discussion uh, with him, and uh, I have a very nice memory of past exchanges in South Korea. IFANS uh, is a well-known institute, and he served as the head of the organization. Last but not least, we have pre-recorded the message of the Executive Director, Committee for Human Rights on North Korea, Mr. Greg Scarlato. Mr. Greg Scarlato's presentation uh, was recorded on the 30th of November. Mr. Scarlato is active in Washington. He is an expert of human rights issues in North Korea. He is approaching to the American Congress, talking in the Congress and appealing through the mass media. On this occasion, we have invited the three for their messages. So I will first invite Professor Nishino for his initial remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity to speak at this event. The theme of the symposium is international cooperation to resolve the abduction issue as a global issue. Let me speak on that subject. There's not a time when international partnership in terms of countermeasures against North Korea and resolution of abduction has become so important. Japan must, without complacency, continue partnership with the United States, our ally, as well as with South Korea, a party of the peninsular issue and the international community. In January, the Biden administration uh, was inaugurated, and they demanded the dialogue and negotiations towards denuclearization of North Korea under the calibrated practical approach. But North Korea refuses to respond. On the other hand, the United States is engaged not only in the strategic competition with China, but uh, is confronted with challenges including Russia and the Middle East. I don't think they can afford to allocate sufficient diplomatic assets to North Korea. Moon Jae-in administration of South Korea is aiming to achieve the declaration of the end of the Korean War, but views are mixed in Korea and in the international community. On the other hand, the Kim Jong-un administration of North Korea continues to demonstrate its will for the continuation of nuclear and missiles development, and in fact, they are repeating test launches of new missiles. Military tension in the peninsula has not been alleviated. The security environment remains uncertain. North Korea has come up with the policy of people and public first, but the dire straits of the people of North Korea is becoming exacerbated. Sanctions by the global community, lockdown of the borders, due to the pandemic and natural disaster. These are the three burdens that have kept the economy injured. In June, Chairman Kim himself demonstrated his uh, feeling of crisis towards the tight food supply. UN Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights Situation of North Korea in October indicated the crisis over economy and food in North Korea and suggested that the sanctions may be relaxed. So 
the approach between relevant country and the international community individually reflect the position of each party. So in this context, Japan must strongly demonstrate resolve and action towards the resolution of the abduction issue and take the leading role for international partnership. In last week's policy speech, Prime Minister Kishida said abduction is a issue to which we attached highest priority in order to realize the earliest possible return of all abductees through partnership with the United States and other countries, we will capture all opportunity and inject utmost efforts. As mentioned by Prime Minister Kishida, partnership with the United States, who is our ally and whom is being sought by North Koreans to improve relationship is indispensable. And luckily, the Biden administration attaches importance to cooperation with allies and is focusing on the defense of human rights and democracy. Under the shared notion that North Korea's abduction issue is a global human rights issue, there must be robust collaboration. At the time of the inauguration, President Biden was talking about the possible appointment of special envoy on North Korean human rights issue, and the Japanese government should urge him to do that. Partnership with Korea, which is the party to the peninsula issue, is very important as well. Now, intense competition has already begun for the presidential election slated to take place in March. Uh, there will be fierce battle between uh, promising candidates, but in the campaign commitments, there seems to be some differences in their North Korean policy. Whoever becomes the leader of South Korea, Japan should be prepared to have a close cooperation to resolve abduction and North Korean issues through communication. Of course, approach to China and Russia who maintain favorable relations with North Korea is indispensable. But to make such approach effective is factored upon close cooperation with the United States and ROK. Since earlier this year, trilateral consultations between Japan, US, and ROK has become active, which is a booster to strengthening the international foundation for partnership for the resolution of the abduction issue. This should be sought further. As mentioned by the families of the victims, the resolution of the abduction issue is urgent. We have no luxury of time. So coordination of policy must be done immediately, and Japan must take the lead. Finally, I pray for the health of the family and safety of the abductees. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Anishino, from the area of expertise about the recent U.S., South Korea, North Korea, and uh, Japan's uh, movements. And uh, regarding Japan, uh, South Korea, and Japan-U.S. alliances' importance and uh, the importance of collaboration was mentioned. You mentioned that uh, the government of Japan uh, should take action with strong determination more than ever, and uh, that the government should collaborate even further with the global community. Next will be Mr. Choi Gan from Seoul, South Korea. The floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Hoshino. It's great to see you again. I'm very much on important symposium. First of all, I'd like to extend my wholehearted sympathy toward the families of abductees in Korea. We have officially 516 abductees who have not returned home yet. In addition to that, we have more than since the Korea since the, since the Korean War. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. So actually, on that purpose, and also the in, in most recently, actually, one government, South Korean government official was killed and burned in open sea. So that is a crime against the humanity. I fully agree with what uh, Nishino Junya-san said. It's a global effort, global collaboration 
on this issue is very much important. But as I said, this is a crime against the humanity. We have to think about legal action we can take, not just appealing to the international movement, but also we have Are you? I Korea. can hear you very well. Yes, and also, but because actually we have to have more international collaboration on this issue. But to my knowledge, we have not imposed any sanction on North Korea because of humanitarian issue. But I think it is necessary for us to think about what kinds of sanction measures we can impose on North Korean individuals or entities who are deeply involved in this abduction issue. So there are a couple of the organizations in North Korea. General uh, Reconnaissance and Surveillance uh, Bureau is the one of the target, usually the responsible for the abduction issue and also the espionage. So we have to think about very seriously uh, raising the international opinion, awareness, and also, but also the, the measures, more concrete measures we can take on this issue. And regarding Dick, uh, North Korea's cooperation on this issue because they have not felt any pain on this issue at all. So actually, it is necessary for us all come together as a one on handling this issue very much. I was asked to, to talk about briefly about North Korean internal situation. As Nishino Junya sang mentioned, North Korea is suffering from economic uh, prop crisis, but not to the level we observed during the 1990s. So during the 1990s, we estimated at least 500,000 to 2 million North Korean people actually died because of famine. But I don't think the current economic crisis is at, is at the same level we observed. That means North Korea's resilience will be maintained at a certain level. I am not very much optimistic about North Korea's the change uh, in their own calculus in handling the external relations and internal relations. In, in addition to that, we should also pay our close attention to the people who are with, contained in political prison camp in North Korea. It is reported there is at least uh, there are at least six prison political prison camps, and also 150,000 people are suffering. So their conditions are not comparable, imaginable at this point of time. So I say we have to do something about their own right. But unfortunately, the, for the past several years, the, pro, the South Korean government has not been very much active in promoting the human rights issue or abduction issue on North Korea. Uh, so I think that it is time for South Korea to be more concerned with this issue and become a very, very important partner is not about interpreting relation. It is about the identity issue of South Korean government and South Korea as a liberal democratic country in the world. As a member of a liberal international democratic country uh, community, we should come together in solving this issue in, in every all dimension. And secondly, actually, we have to put the pressure on Because it, it seems to me that China doesn't care much about this, this issue at all. And also maybe we need to seek Chinese cooperation because the North Korea has a heavy reliance on China on various issues, on economy and political, diplomatic, as well as the military dimension. Let me stop there. Thank you. Uh, Chegang -sensei, arigato. Thank you very much, Dr. Chegang. Your comments were clearly heard, and thank you for sharing with us the seriousness of the abduction issue from the ROK perspective on the necessity of legal approach. And you talked about some actions within North Korea, and further, you said abduction is an issue that has to do with the identity of South Korea from the humanity, human rights, liberal democracy perspective. So those were very important points. Kamsamnida. We now would like to watch the video of the message 
by Mr. Briggs Scarlatto. Dear friends and colleagues, greetings and warm wishes. Let me begin by thanking the government of Japan for the opportunity to address this extraordinarily important symposium. The entire world continues to struggle with the COVID pandemic. During these difficult times, we remember and pray for abductees from Japan and other countries, as well as their families, who continue to seek closure and justice. The DPRK regime has politicized COVID prevention, instituting draconian controls aimed at cracking down on factors threatening its grip on power, in particular, informal markets, smuggled Chinese cell phones, and information coming in from the outside world. While the Kim regime claims that the DPRK is COVID-free, domestic and cross-border travel restrictions have taken a heavy toll on North Korea's human rights and humanitarian situation. While food shortages are not as bad as the 1990s and the DPRK is likely not on the verge of a great famine, the humanitarian situation is dire. The international community needs access and transparency in order to assess the real humanitarian needs of North Koreans, in particular the needs of most vulnerable groups, women, children, the elderly, and people in detention, especially political prisoners. The Biden administration has repeatedly emphasized human rights as a pillar of our U.S. foreign policy, an essential component of the core values we share with Japan, the Republic of Korea, and other key allies, friends, and partners. The Biden administration has also underlined multilateralism as another pillar of our U.S. foreign policy. The third committee of the U.N. General Assembly has recently adopted its latest resolution on human rights in the DPRK. Regrettably, the DPRK continues to refuse to engage in dialogue with the United States or Japan. As the Kim regime continues to violate the human rights of its own people and threaten other countries with its nuclear and missile development, family members of Japanese citizens abducted by North Korea have continued to suffer. However difficult it may be, the international community must resolve this critical issue. The entire world will be undergoing a post-COVID reset. North Korea, as isolated as it is, will be no exception. The international community may consider disbursing humanitarian assistance to North Korea, hopefully while upholding transparency, the need for access, and a human rights upfront approach aimed to assist most vulnerable groups first. As the DPRK undergoes a post-COVID reset, there can be hope for the North Korean people. Prime Minister Kishida Fumio has clearly signaled that he's ready to meet with North Korea's leader face to face. I'm certain that the governments and citizens of Japan and the United States would stand together, ready to assist the people of North Korea in seeking a bright future. This would be possible only if North Korea's leadership made a strategic decision to change course, improve the human rights and humanitarian situation of its people, do away with its obstinate development of nuclear weapons, ballistic missiles, and other tools of death, and focus on development instead. Most importantly, North Korea must provide a full, final, and verifiable resolution of the abduction conundrum. If abductees are still in North Korea, they must be reunited with their family members. If they passed away while held against their will in North Korea, their remains must be returned to their families and hometowns. Japanese families have suffered far too long, and so have the families of abductees from other countries. They deserve closure. They deserve to know the fate of their loved ones taken by the DPRK regime. They deserve to be reunited with their loved ones. Their torment at the hands of the Kim regime must come to an end. Thank you very much. That was uh, the message by Mr. Scarlato. Inside North Korea, there are very grave uh, human rights abuses. And if there are humanitarian aids, First of all, the human rights must be protected for us to be able to provide humanitarian aid and to the families of the victims. They have the right to be reunited with the abductees. Indeed, that is, of course, a serious human rights. Thank you very much for the message from Mr. Scar Alato. 
Those were the initial、uh, presentation, and since this is a special opportunity, we would like to have some opportunities for questions and answers. Professor Nishino, regarding abduction, for North Korea to tackle the issue seriously, the Kim Jong Un regime that is hesitant. What environment will allow North Korea to be more proactive in dealing seriously with North Korea? That would be my question to you. Thank you. The topic today is, in terms of international cooperation to resolve the abduction issue, I think there are two possibilities out of a lot. First of all. What North Korea wants, what it aspires, is to improve relationship with the U.S. or even have a relationship with the U.S., which means that there must be close collaboration with the U.S. That the U.S. and North Korea, for them to improve the relation or to establish diplomatic relationship, the human rights, including abduction, must be resolved. That that is going to be the precondition. That has to be acknowledged. Carefully by North Korea. That's point one. In order to do that, we have to work very careful. It is indispensable to collaborate with the U.S. As I mentioned, another point is the so-called regime change to overcome economic change. For that purpose, North Korea, if they want to improve relationship with Japan or if they want economic aid from Japan, back in 2002. There was the Japan-North Korea Pyeongchang Declaration. That was because they wanted support. However, unfortunately, by next year it is going to be the 20th anniversary of the Pyeongchang Declaration. But in the last 20 years, nuclear capability has only advanced, and the situation has become even more complicated. Therefore, Japan alone cannot overcome. Japan alone cannot resolve the issue. Nor the abduction issue. There is a limit to what Japan can do alone, and that is why, just as I am talking today, international cooperation is increasingly important more than ever before. Thank you. Professor Nishino, thank you very much. International partnership is necessary as we counter North Korea. But even in that context, abduction first. You asserted that point. Mr. Chega, I have one question. May I? This is with regards to U.S.-China. So sorry, DPRK and China relations between North Korea and China. So, if you can comment on that bilateral relationship, because North Korea for North Korea economic relations with China is fatally important. We understand that, but. The DPRK China trade has dropped significantly due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but the Sino-DPRK relationship for North Korea is necessary to survive. So, are you witnessing any change, or how will the China DPRK relationship unfold in the months and years ahead? May. Can you make a comment, please? Okay, sh sure. Actually, before the discovery of the the the, the, the most recent uh, Omicron, Omicron variant, mm -hmm. DPRK and China were very much close to open up their border, and the North Korea was ready to receive additional the aid or trade from China. But actually, because of the the arrival of the new variant. Of COVID-19, I think North Korea cannot open up its border. That's one thing. But actually, there could be something going on, on、uh, and illegally, despite official close the the, the 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 close of the border. So it, there must be some kinds of the activities going on. The vendor can cross the Yalu River and then bring some material back to that. That's why actually there are some. We have not heard any disaster or famine in North Korea all the way up to now. And secondly, I think this between DPRK and China, the most important thing is about their political relationship, not a trade relations. 
So China is backing up North Korea wholeheartedly as far as it can. That actually trend will be much more strengthened because of a continuing or deepening U.S.-China strategic rivalry. I think China sees North Korea as a strategic leverage they can manipulate against the United States. At the same time, North Korea see China as their the maybe most important strategic leverage. In, in addition to their own nuclear weapons and missiles, China is the one they can back up North Korea in international front, politically and diplomatically. So I think maybe next year we can see a little bit more improved relations between North Korea and China on various fronts. So already they have, they actually have celebrated their 60th anniversary treaty of friendship and cooperation this year. So I'm going. I assume that actually that uh, joint statement will be much more realized next year. So we will see more uh, deepening relations between the DPRK and China next year. But we should not too much focus on trade, on economic assistance coming from China uh, toward North Korea. Second, uh, another point, I don't know whether China is fully implementing sanctions vis-a-vis -vis North Korea. UNCOI reported that actually China has violated, has not fully implemented economic sanctions vis-a-vis -vis North Korea by allowing ship-to-ship -ship transfer or other things like that. So, so we have to ask China to fully implement economic sanctions. That is the best way to solve North Korea nuclear problem as well as humanitarian issue, including the abduction issue. Thank you very much. Sanctions against North Korea is based on UN Security Council resolutions, and therefore China's effort must be monitored carefully as uh, Mr. Che Gan just told us, Japan, South Korea, and Japan, United States, uh, analysis of the situation and about how we can cooperate, there must be careful uh, discussion indeed about the ordinary people of North Korea. Thinking about the people, of course, economy is important. Uh, but the North Korean Authority, what is important for them? It is the political relationship with China. This is the serious gap. We have to acknowledge this harsh reality. I am aware of the time constraint, but uh, Mr. Scarlato, I have uh, asked the questions to him, and uh, therefore please listen to that, which is, this is about U.S.-North Korea relationship. U.S.-North Korea relationship at the moment, they do not have contact going forward. What environment will allow the U.S. and North Korea to sit down and talk at the table? That was my prior question because I expected that this was the area of interest by many. And the response was as follows. The Biden administration is showing interest in diplomatic engagement with North Korea. By returning to the table, the Biden administration is not going to concede just for that. Eventually, the Kim Jong-un administration, it is up to them whether they will come to the table of negotiation. The provocation of North Korea is allow it needs the U.S. to apply the fundamental diplomatic power uh, but uh, because of COVID-19 restrictions, uh, the impoverished uh, North Korea and uh, Chairman Kim Jong-un is uh, not interested in changing the status quo. After all, the North Korean authority, many diplomatic uh, burden is in front of Administration Biden, and North Korea seems to be content that the U.S. is busy. And right before the President's section of South uh, Korea, Just because this is before the President's election of South Korea, and North Korea will probably wait and see until the election is over. Meanwhile, the enforcement of the uh, sanctions, and because Kim Jong-un has the excuse of COVID-19, under the difficulty that they have brought on themselves, 
there is an incentive that they might wish to talk and come to the negotiation table. So, enforcement of the sanction and its importance is emphasized by Mr. Scarlato, and in particular, uh, the Kim Jong administration, under the pretext of COVID-19 and under the difficulty that they have brought about themselves, there might be a possibility that they might be incentivized to come to negotiate. They use COVID-19 as the excuse, but the current difficult situation is caused by the Kim Jong-un administration themselves. This is a very deep insight of Mr. Scarlato. So this might be the area where we can do something, that this might be an effective pressure over North Korea. According to my understanding, we had to rush through this panel of discussion. Apologies. However, as a global issue, we wanted to deal with the abduction issue. The international cooperation to resolve the abduction is as a global issue was the topic today. So I understand that the importance of global cooperation has been emphasized. Kim Jong-un administration already has reached 10 years. And meanwhile, Japan and South Korea, as well as the United States and the international community have taken various approaches. However, the situation could not be improved. However, of course, we are not going to give up. We will continue to work hard and continue to appeal about the importance, gravity of the abduction issue. And what we think is the resolution, that is, the return of all the abductees immediately, all at once. That is our goal. We will be united and work in solidarity towards our sole goal. Today's symposium and the panel discussion, uh, I hope that our determination that we will definitely bring them back. I hope that we can share not only in Japan, but with the entire world. And uh, while the relationship with North Korea is stuck in a quagmire, we would like uh, to seek a breakthrough in some way or another. I sincerely hope that uh, we will raise the issues and lead these words into action. The abduction issue is, of course, a human rights issue. And in terms of raising awareness of human rights, this topic has been taken up. Uh, but why this is a human rights issue is because uh, the abductees are the victims. Uh, the fundamental right for human being, which is liberty and freedom, that have been deprived. So this unfair situation should not last. They are divided and separated between the families for so many years, for so long. This kind of situation must be remedied as quickly as possible. And therefore, through this international symposium and the panel discussion between Japan, US, South Korea, and together with the international community, we wish to squarely face North Korea in order to resolve the abduction issues as quickly as possible. Our strong determination that we are going to do our utmost uh, will be renewed afresh uh, once again. And by this way, may I conclude uh, the uh, panel discussion. Thank you for your attention. Uh, Professor Hoshino, thank you very much for your smooth moderatorship before this difficult discussion. I thank all the panelists very much. This is the end of the part to International Symposium. Thank you very much to Professor Hoshino and Professor Nishino. Please return to your seat. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for coming here or viewing by YouTube. We have gone beyond the planned time. Thank you for your understanding. There was a leadership change of the Association of Families, and we are full of frustration. The victims and the families all are aging. The government of Japan understands that there is no minute to lose. In order to 
reach results with a sense of urgency, we will do our utmost and we ask for further support and cooperation. This is the end of the 2021 International Symposium by the Government of Japan related to the North Korean Human Rights Abuses Awareness Week. Thank you very much.